seeing a lot of it. Old cases coming back to light because of DNA evidence and the ability to link things that we never had the ability to do before. It's exciting. It's it's very, I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for here. It's finding justice for crimes that otherwise would have just been sitting there never to be solved. Oftentimes there's still people around. Sometimes there's the victim. Sometimes there is the perpetrators themselves that are being arrested. In this case, Pretty much everybody's dead, but it's been solved. 1974 murder case, the decades old mystery surrounding the death of a woman found nearly decapitated in Provincetown has finally been solved. Investigators have officially closed the case of the woman known for nearly 50 years as the lady in the dunes after identifying her as Ruth Marie Terry and naming her husband Guy Moldovan as the suspect in her murder. In a recent significant breakthrough made in October of 2022, the FBI positively identified the lady in the dunes as Ruth Marie Terry. Her body was discovered in a sand dune on July 26th of 1974 with her hands cut off and her head nearly severed from her body. The investigators Ew. used investigative genealogy to identify Terry, a resident of Tennessee, the FBI revealed that Terry had suffered a blow to the head and was most likely killed several weeks before her body was officially discovered. The Massachusetts State Police took over the investigation from Provincetown Police in 1982. Terry's skull, which was kept in police custody but not buried with her other remains, was sent to labs for testing. In 2021, Othram was able to create a DNA profile that eventually led to a positive identification. The chief police medical examiner's office issued Terry's death certificate on April 5th. The investigation then turned to Terry's husband, Guy Moldovan, or Guy Moldovan. The couple got married in Reno, Nevada in either 1973 or 74, traveled to Tennessee to visit Terry's family. Moldovan and Terry traveled together in the summer of 74, but Moldovan returned home. He indicated to witnesses that Terry had passed away, but told her brother that they had a fight during their honeymoon and had not heard from her again. The district attorney's office revealed that Moldovan was also believed to be the prime suspect of the disappearance of his ex-wife and stepdaughter in Seattle in 1960. So yes. he had some reps going on here, but back in those days, you could just be like, you know, she went off and did her own thing, and or she died. I don't know how, but I'm we're good. We're good. I'm, you know. Let's watch Matlock. Investigators determined that Moldovan was responsible for Terry's death in 1974 as well. So he's a wife and daughter killer. Moldovan, who also went by the names. And he, when you go by multiple names and you're not in media, that's another one, too. Yeah. Moldovan also went by the names Raul Guy Rockwell. Guy Moldovan Rockwell died in 2002. In November 2022, Massachusetts State Police announced they were Seeking information about him, detectives investigated the 1960 disappearance of his wife and stepdaughter and later found human remains in a septic tank of their home. Although Moldovan was arrested for unlawful flight and convicted of grand larceny, he was never charged in relation to the Seattle killings. A new article dated December 1st, 1960, reported that Moldovan was arrested in New York City after the mutilated bodies of Manzania Moranis and her 18-year-old daughter, Dolores Ann Marines, were found in the septic tank. The article noted that detectives found dismembered remains in other parts of human tissue. Dolores and Mancena disappeared April 1st of 1960. Maldwin was 78 when he died. They finally have some resolution here, although everybody is long gone. But so, wow. but here's the thing: there, there are probably there are relatives of these people, I would mm. imagine, and I'd love to dive a little bit further into this and find out, you know, tell me about Guy. What was he like? Because obviously there's an issue here. He keeps freaking killing people. And I was looking, saw that the body of Terry didn't have any hands. And I thought, why would that back then? Fingerprinting. Yep. Yep. So we're, this is like a serial killer. I'm curious, too, because, I mean, it's just it's so interesting to note how they documented these things back then, because it's like, yep, we found the body of the mom and the daughter in the septic tank, as well as other human remains. 
Right. So who else is down there? This guy was killing a lot of people, it appears, and pretty much got away with it his entire life. Even though they got really close on some charges here and there, somehow they always seem to get past or overlook the murder of these women that was constantly around this man. What the fuck? I mean, yeah, we apparently, do- be, you know, being a detective wasn't a real prolific job at that time because it to, you know, to us looking back, look at him, look at Guy, the women around him are they're missing. There's a problem here. Without a doubt. I keep I mean, I you got to put yourself in the mindset. What was things like you were talking about kind of the good old boys club day? You're talking, you know, mad men such era. Is that what? is to play or is that play here as to why they let him have a pass and they didn't go harder on him? Did he just kind of woo his way through all of this with detectives? I don't know. And it's interesting too, the fact that, you know, Terry either passed away on the honeymoon or they had a fight and he hadn't heard from her again. Back then women didn't just wander off. They didn't have their own bank accounts and their own cell phones and credit cards you know, a woman today could go wander off and be just fine. Back then, that was unheard of. Yeah, It was a different time. So the fact that she just doesn't come back from the honeymoon, huge red flag. And that should have raised so many flags for so many people that something isn't right. He's not just going to leave her in Tennessee. Yeah, You know, that's not how that's going to work. It was at least without somebody knowing. It was prime time for killers back then cuz you could get away with so much shit and yeah. no one would be the wiser. And many of them, you know, got away with it. It's just now that they're in their 70s and 80s we're finally catching them through DNA and like I always say, there's plenty of people sitting there shaking in their boots, I'm sure, that because, you know, their nephew yeah. or niece did the DNA test that they're going to end up behind bars. And hopefully they will. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.